Let's introduce our contestants. Our first unfortunate soul is Jeff Provine, who died in 2069 as he was gunned down by laser fire in the Great Robot Wars, still unsure which side he was on. Now competing against him is Noah Milligan, who died in 2027, smothered by puppies. Welcome to Haunted Shuffle, the game show that shuffles horrors for our contestants to survive. I'm your host, Mr. Menace the Six, and yes, I am the reason why your cell phone suddenly loses signal. Tonight, we have two local authors competing to see which one will be the chosen one. But before we get to them and our first game, I'd like to introduce my lovely co-host and bookstore owner and jury and judge and executioner yes that's the one and the only chelsea chelsea tell us a little bit about, about yourself hi my name is chelsea richardson and i own a novel idea bookshop in downtown historic guthrie all right. So what can visitors expect to find? When you walk in, you'll be greeted by Mr. Darcy, our basset hound, and our other basset hound, Miss Lizzie. And we have all genres of books. And we have a nice sitting area, and we just hope that everybody comes and lounges and sits, stays, and reads. Thank you, Chelsea. I appreciate you so much. And now, we're getting started with our first game. Before I invited our contestants here to the Ocean View Hotel, I had the contestants prepare a 600 word or less short story involving a deck of cards. Our judge Chelsea will use her own deck of cards to score each story, awarding between 1 and 9 points. First up, we're gonna have Jeff Provine. Jeff, share your story with the world. My story is called Pick a Card. Pick a card, any card, the magician called, holding a fanned out deck of red-backed cards right at me. I made a face I hoped looked more like a smirk than a sneer. Up close street magic, yeah, that's what I want on my day off. He hadn't asked for money, but of course he was going to. There was an upside down top hat at his feet with a couple of five dollar bills paper clipped to it. When I turned toward him, the magician grinned at me. Yeah, I'm a sucker. I sighed and took a card, six of spades. Slip it back into the deck without me seeing, the magician said, looking away. Or feeling it with your fingers, I wondered. Anyway, I did what he asked. The magician shuffled with a flourish. He flipped part of the deck around itself, dribbling cards out of place and back in. Then he shuffled it behind his back, over his shoulder, and finally cut and recut the cards before making a bridge to mix them up. The long coat he had wore had danced around with him, casting a sudden shadow over his drab leather boots. He drew the top card, six of spades. Is this your card? I sneer smirked again and told him, nope. The magician's gaze fell to the cards as his face wrinkled up. You sure? Yeah, no, sorry, bud. Huh. He shuffled again, grunting as he twisted the cards around in his hands. I thought I smelled sulfur wafted up. My neck started to itch. Somewhere, a dog howled. He revealed the top card, not even looking at it as he panted for breath. Is this your card? Six of spades. I couldn't help myself and shook my head. Nah. -uh. His shoulders slumped, his face turned red. Then he took in a deep breath and murmured a strange, echoing rhythm. The sulfur stench grew more intense. He shuffled the cards again, angry, like a baker pounding dough. The cards seemed to blur into each other, becoming liquid and sticking as hearts and diamonds slid off one card and fell onto another. A close peal of thunder made me cover my ears. The sun grew dim, and the ground shook. People screamed and ran into the street. Hey, wait, I tried to stop him. The magician was too wrapped up in his craft to hear me. He was shouting now, though I could make out a, only a few guttural syllables over the din of screams and rumbling. Cracks in the sidewalk widened. Smoke and strange violet light poured out of them. I wanted to run, but the shaking was so bad it was all I could do to stay on my feet. Then it stopped. The magician, shoulders slumped, staggering under his own weight, held up a card. Drops of sweat and blood raced down his face. Is, is this your card? Six of spades. Yes, I screamed. Yeah, that's it. He made a weary smile and whispered in a strained voice, Ta-da. 
I emptied my wallet into the upturned top hat on the ground and ran, not even sure which direction I was going. Wonderful story, Jeff. Ooh. All right, and now, let's give it up for Noah. Uh, my short story is titled, at least for now, The Host. He couldn't believe he was doing this. Going over to a stranger's house he met on Grinder. No texting to get to know each other. No cute date at a coffee shop downtown. Just straight to his home without a moment's thought, like a child barreling toward his presence on Christmas morning. His mom would be so disappointed in him. Meeting men on the internet? Absolutely insane. This place was messier than Harold had expected. Dirty laundry piled on the couch, pizza boxes cluttered the coffee table. Not so much unlike Harold's place, but he thought it strange his host hadn't tidied up even a little. It made Harold feel cheap and dirty, not worthy of even the slightest bit of effort. This thought strangely excited him though, even though he hated himself for it. Where was his host? He'd said he was going to freshen up a little, but that had been ten minutes ago. Harold toured the house while he waited. It was large for a man living alone. Three stories, two living areas on the ground floor alone, large stone fireplace, a gourmet kitchen, and a basement. It was older and in need of a fresh coat of paint. He wondered if it was a family home, the one he'd grown up in. Strange, though, he didn't have a single picture hanging on his walls. In the kitchen were more dirty plates, an open box of Cinnamon Toast Crunch, and a cold half pot of coffee. It smelled stale. Harold wouldn't be surprised if it was more than a day old. He went to open the fridge. He wasn't hungry, simply killing time, wondering if he should take this opportunity to slip out the front door, act like none of this ever happened, and block his host from existence, when he heard something, a familiar sound, faint but there, a deck of cards, shuffling. It was coming from the basement. The door was cracked, a lone bulb illuminating the space in a hushed orange glow. Harold could only see the stairs and a concrete floor smudged with soot and dust. Hello? Harold called out. Is someone there? No answer, only the cards shuffling. Harold eased his way down into the basement, hand gripped around the banister, careful not to lose his footing on the wobbly stairs. Hello? The basement was large and unfinished. No drywall, only the studs and exposed wiring, ductwork and PVC pipe. A dryer struggled in the corner, shaking as it rattled and groaned. Across the room was a soiled, bare mattress. Sitting atop it, chained to a post, was a boy, no older than 20, 25, shuffling a deck of cards. It looked like he'd been imprisoned here for months. Oh my God, Harold froze. The fear strangled him. Are you okay? The boy looked at him, head bald, complexion the color of a wet paper cup. He held out the deck of cards and opened his mouth. His tongue had been cut out. Behind him, Harold heard footsteps. It was his host. It had to be. Harold turned around to find him standing at the bottom of the stairs, holding a knife, the ace of spades tattooed on his forearm. Want to play a game? He asked. So strange, Gerald thought. His last. He looks just like a regular guy. And I believe that's a wrap. Chelsea? It's time for you to cast your judgment. Um, I really enjoyed both of them, but I enjoyed one more than the other. So, eight and six. Eight goes to Noah, six goes to John. Hey, great story. <laughs> yeah, yeah, those are close, right? Eight yeah. and six? Yeah. All right, writers, that was round one. And now for round two, we're going to go to the hotel bar for a little bit of... Pub Trivia. For our second challenge, I'm going to test your knowledge of horror literature. Inside Edgar Allan Poe's head, we have eight questions. You each have a whiteboard to write your answer. Each correct answer is worth one point. But... Here's where I shuffle the rules around. First, you may risk going to our judge Chelsea for a whisper, a hint, which may or may not be correct. Second, the contestant can read out a false question to lead their opponent astray. 
thereby keeping a point to themselves. However, the opponent can call their bluff by writing liar. If they are correct, they get a point. All right, let's get started. What is the name of the poem by Edgar Allan Poe that begins, What's upon a midnight dreary while I ponder weak and weary? The Raven, you're both correct and a point each for both of you. What is the title of the first book in the Goosebumps series by R.L. Stein? I want to whisper. Okay, I think it's the haunted mask. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Reveal your answers. You are both incorrect. The correct answer, which Jeff was telling the truth on the question, and the answer is, Welcome to the Dead House, which was published in 1992. I own it. I just haven't read it since 1992. What author, based in Boulder, Colorado, is the author of The Only Good Indians? Gentlemen, are you ready? Eagerly. Ooh, it looks like Noah tried to lie. What was the actual question? The actual question was, what color is Jason's mask on Friday the 13th? And that is white. And Jeff called you a liar, so you both get a point. You are neck and neck on this. Which novel by Red Bradbury features a traveling carnival led by the sinister Mr. Dark? I'm gonna use my, uh... Use your whisper. I actually don't know this one. Me neither. I'm most famous Fahrenheit 451, but I don't think that's it. Yeah, me neither. That's it. That's it. <laughs> I do. I'm gonna write it down anyway. Reveal your answers. The answer was indeed something wicked this way comes. Point for Jeff. What was the name of the hotel Mr. Menace said we were at? You said this is horror literature. Are you using a very broad definition of literature to include filming? <laughs> hey, Bob Dylan did win the Nobel, so. Can't argue with that. <sighs> Reveal your answers. It was Ocean View Hotel. I changed it oh, the last no. second. Uh. What is the name of the character in Bram Stoker's Dracula who first travels to Transylvania? Jonathan Harker was the correct answer, not Keanu Reeves. <laughs> Isn't that who played him though? Many strange thing we've seen already. <laughs> and Anne writes the Vampire Chronicles. What is the name of the vampire who tells his life story? I'm going to get a whisper on that. Louie. Louie. Yeah. Okay. Show me your answers. It was Louis de Point de Luc, so I will give you a point, Jeff, for that answer. Ah. And now for our final question. In The Shining, what is the name of the hotel while Jack Torrance becomes the caretaker? Reveal your answers. Overlook Hotel is correct. I should have lied. In the first challenge, Jeff scored six points and then seven on the trivia for a total of 13 points. As for Noah, he scored eight in the first challenge and then three, bringing him to a total of 11 points. And now we travel for our final game contestants. Are you ready? You know it. Okay. We're 
here in the final room, the Diamond Suite, in which our writers will have to compose an original poem inspired by their surroundings. And on top of that, they only have six minutes. That's right, not six days, not six hours, only six minutes. Now there's a couple ways they can score for each object around the room that they feature. They get one point. And then our wonderful Judge Chelsea will score points for two categories. One for presentation, two for content. So, lots of ways to earn points in our final challenge. Writers, I'm going to step outside and come in here and let you find your muse. Down. Now, may the poetry slam commence. Noah, present your poem. Okay. <clears throat> Untitled. The walls burn black or thin. You can't scream until your lungs bleed and the glass shatters on the painting of the maple tree withering in the wind. It will do no good, for you are already dead bleeding in my white sheets. Jeff Provine, present your poem. The walls. I've laid here so long I've forgotten what's behind the walls. These black scaly walls, plaster cracked, lath bare. There are things to see here, sheets spotted red for my consumption, dusty mirror, unused sewing machine, Paintings of landscapes I know don't exist. My bureau with the drawers screwed shut. My cat by my side, even as a mummy. But the walls are beyond them all. Beyond the walls, I don't know. They hold me here, like my ragged body that hurts and smells. Soon it will let me go, and I'll go beyond the walls into the unknown. Okay. Give them those scores. Okay. So, for performance for Noah, get a nine. For content, seven. For Jeff, for performance, a five. That's Jeff. <laughs> and for content, an eight. All right. Give us a moment to tally up the scores and calculate our winner. There can only be one winner. And the winner. It was a very close game of 33 to 32, and the chosen one is Jeff. And you will now be sacrificed into the void of the unknown so that writers will have 6% less writer's block. Do I have to? <laughs> Thank you for your sacrifice. Oh, okay. I'm so glad I got a second. <laughs> All right. Goodbye, everyone. <laughs> At least I go out a winner. <laughs> you better appreciate this. I'm changing. <laughs>